Welcome back to the Tigerium Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with a video, and I'm talking about the 1991 Kenner Robin Hood toys. Now, I'm going to talk to you about a few things. First thing I'm going to talk about is the movie and why I liked it and some other aspects of it. Number two, I'm going to talk to you about the toys and the origins of the toys. And then number three, uh... We're going to show you some of the action features, kind of what they do, and then uh, kind of some fun in the end there. So, first off, the movies. Okay, so this movie in 1991 was a good movie. I enjoyed it. There's a few points I want to talk about. Number one, I never viewed Kevin Costner as an action hero, and I've also never viewed uh, uh, Michael Keaton as an action hero like in Batman. So it's kind of, that's my association I make on that one. But I think Michael Keaton did it, or, or nah. I think Kevin Costner did a pretty good job here. Kevin Costner was also in Bodyguard, which was kind of an action movie in a way, and kind of set similar tone in this movie. Also, uh, there was a Coast Guard movie he was in, so he was sort of action-y. But in the end, I still don't think of him as an action hero at all. There's also deleted scenes in the newer DVDs that I've picked up and really explains some more of the story and uh, makes a little bit uh, more clarification on what's going on in the story. Okay, so the movie's a big part of why this toy line failed. It really was a failure of a toy line. Uh, most stuff is bought on clearance. Nobody's really after it today. I mean, I'd say nobody. I'm interested in it because I like Kenner. I like, uh, you know, some of the rehashes that they use, the remolds. Uh, we're gonna get into that, but people really aren't after this for the Robin Hood factor, and I'm sure there's select few people that are that have every single thing that came out, and uh, and that's pretty cool. But you can still get these pretty cheap online, real easy. Uh, so the only thing is the shipping because of the size. But uh, looking at the um, movie itself, it was it was fun, it was uh, action, and there was some drama to it and had some dynamic shifts in there. It was a good movie. Uh, I wouldn't say it holds up so much today, but I still enjoy watching it. And uh, here's the thing, I'm watching it with my kids. They can't pay attention to it. it. Doesn't capture their interest at all because it's way over their head. And trying to sell a toy line on a movie that's way over their head, it's like we're not selling a, they didn't make an enemy of the state toy line with Will Smith and a mini Turbo Express. So that's kind of what this is. Go. The can I use the Gamorrean Guard for Friar Tuck? That is absolutely correct, Chris. So Chris is right. He uh, pointed out a very good point that they reused the Gamorrean Guard mold to make the Friar Tuck figure, and that that resonates through the entire series of toys. Okay, so the battle wagon was uh, the Ewok battle wagon was reused. They also used the same catapult, the Ewok catapult. So you got a battle wagon and a catapult, and probably whoever bought this got it on extreme clearance. So um, there's old Friar Tuck there on top of the battle wagon and uh, in a cloak. But this, I never really cared about the Power of the Force Ewok stuff because it just, I was so far out of Star Wars at the time. And I got one of these, uh, this is actually my second one. I got one for like 20 bucks or 15 bucks or something uh, of, of the actual uh, Robin Hood version. And it's exactly the same. The, you can tell the panels are a little bit lighter and there's a few differences in it. But the reality of it is you could slap a skull on top of this and go to town and have yourself an Ewok battle wagon. Uh, now that, that's why the skull is so expensive. So they also uh, reuse the Ewok village as the Robin Hood playset. And so, and I think they call it the Sherwood Forest playset. And, uh, and there's the, they just call the battle wagon the battle wagon. So it's not an Ewok battle wagon, it's an unbranded battle wagon. And with that, they changed a few things up. Uh, I'm missing one of the leaf treetop things and one of the ones I have doesn't actually fit its correct spot anymore. Um, I don't know if it was just left in the attic too long or whatever. 
But you know, I really wasn't looking to spend a lot of money on these toys because you can pick them up pretty cheap. So I did pick them up real cheap. And I think I spent maybe 75 bucks on everything that's on this table total uh, over the years of buying a few here and there. So the interesting thing is that they just, they changed the coloring in the rails. And I, I found out this thing even exists for buying parts for one of my uh, Ewok villages. I wanted a, one of the box and a loose one. I mean, that's how kind of a lot of collectors do their Star Wars stuff. And I bought these for my Ewok and it turns out that, that, that I've had these for like 20 years because, or 15 years or something, because they were the wrong color. And I was like, well, I know they'll go to something. And it was only, I don't know, seven years ago, I even knew they made a Robin Hood uh, toy line. I was at a toy show and one of the vendors was selling AFA rated figures. AFA rated, like 90, 90 figures. AFA 90s for six bucks a piece. And I was like, I considered buying them. I was like, but I've never even knew they made a Robin Hood toy line. Uh, it cost 50 bucks to AFA rate a carded figure. Look at the soft goods on these guys. So, good point, Jason. These toys have lots of soft goods with them, which is kind of a lost art that's coming back with the 2018 Vintage Collection Star Wars toys. Uh, they're bringing back soft goods on that one. So this, uh, I, I was really impressed with this. I like this shininess of the cape. Uh, it just really kind of makes it look like, hey, these guys are super rich. They have on Azim, if I can get that to pick up, it's like a rubber, uh, a partial rubber coating that looks like it's peeling off to make it look like it's worn and weathered. And it's, it's kind of a gross feeling. I have to admit, it feels really gross. Um, Will Scarlet has the same thing, but it's to look like it's dirty and worn and like hasn't been washed in 20 years because they live in the forest and they don't have access to uh, you know, uh, laundering care. But uh, I, I really didn't notice that so much till I picked this lot up uh, like over the weekend and started messing with it. And, um, and I was thinking, oh, do I have to wash this stuff? But then I referred back to some of my older ones I've had for a while and realized that it's, it's actually uh, the way it's supposed to be. Crossbow Robin Hood. Longbow Robin Hood. Dark Warrior. Hey, he's missing his belt, so his knife has to go somewhere else. Azeen the Great One. Friar Tug missing his belt. Nice sandals. John Little, or I should call him Little John. Okay. Will Scarlet. Spoiler alert, Robin Hood's brother. My personal favorite figure, Sheriff Nottingham. Hey, the Sheriff of Nottingham, uh, he, he, Jason acts more like him. <laughs> okay, so that's a quick run through on the eight figures. Now, there are a couple of issues I have with the lineup that they just, that they picked. First of all, there are only two of the bad guys. You've got the sheriff's cousin they should have included. You have uh, the the other, like they made Friar Tuck, or all the, they're going to make Friar Tuck, of course. But then they had the other, uh, I would say the bad guy man of uh, cloth, but whatever. Uh, there are other bad guys that they could have made. I think they should have balanced it a little bit more. But here I am looking at technically three bad guys. I don't have an extra guard and a whole bunch of good guys. So... It's, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Now, I guess they expect you to buy 50 guards to go with the one sheriff to take on all these plethora of different characters. Now, there is one character that's a good guy that I wish they would have made. And I really like Sean Connery in every single thing he's done, including The Rock. That was actually a good movie, too. And they should have made him as you know King Richard. A King Richard figure would have been an awesome figure. I don't know why they left that lineup. Give us one Robin Hood and give us a King Richard. Or give us one Robin Hood and give us another bad guy. But uh, all the negatives aside, I've got a few of the card bags here. I actually have a set carded that I picked up for real cheap. And I'm not sure what I did with it. Um, it's kind of one of those things that I picked it up, tossed aside a decade ago. And not really sure where it is now. 
This is the net launcher, one of two made specifically from Kenner just for the Robin Hood line. Let's but, see if we can knock these clones down. Let's see if you can do it. Good shot. This is the Bola Bomber. Let's see if Chris can take out these clones. Hey, good job. So in conclusion, I just want to say that the Robin Hood toy line was a pretty cool toy line. Uh, I really like that you can, hey, if you can't get an Ewok Village or a Battle Wagon for a good price, go get a cheap one for 50 bucks and a whole bunch of figures and call it a day. Good luck on getting a skull. Maybe they'll 3D print one. Who knows? But uh, this toy line is pretty cool. It's kind of fun. It'd be like a fun thing you did for the summer playing with these toys. But I think they all got kind of forgotten about by Christmas when some other stuff was out. And uh, I think that uh, if you haven't seen the 91 movie yet, you, you might like it. If you've seen the new one and you would liked it, you probably won't like the old one. But if you did not like the new one, you probably will like the old one. But uh, boys, which movie do you guys like the best? The animated one, the 91, or the one that just came out? Well, the one that just came out? You haven't even seen that one. So I kind of think of Robin Hood as the animated one. 1991 changed the game for me. I like the movie. These toys are cool. Tigerium Hanger, out.